Okay, guys, we are back with another video in the Rising Storm 2 SDK tutorial series. Today, we are going to cover the second round of tips, trips, and mistakes to avoid when you are making your custom Rising Storm 2 map. Uh, by now, hopefully, if you've seen a couple of the other videos, maybe you're getting a little more comfortable with uh, the editor. It's uh, slowly becoming a little more stable, I know. And uh, now that you hopefully you have the basic grasp of how to set up uh, you know a basic map and things like that we can move on to a couple other things to consider some of them are a little less obvious a couple of these are unique to rising storm 2 you won't find them in the other tutorials on the uh, red orchestra SDK uh, and a couple of them I just learned about myself so I wanted to share some info uh, to help you avoid some headaches here in the future uh, the first thing I want to get in today uh, into today is the sounds in your map and this is the environment sounds a lot of you remember if you made a red orchestra 2 map or just played the game there was a lot of ambient battle noise maybe some uh, uh, gunfire in the background artillery sounds wind uh, you had some uh, you know burning noises flames and things like that uh, these are done a little bit differently in uh, rising storm 2 and a uh, little less maybe modder friendly from what I've heard but uh, you can use all of the vanilla sounds you'll find in any of the stock, ma stock maps in your custom map you can also as always do it the old way too and that's involving you know importing some sound you want to use on your map and placing it down the old way I'll link a tutorial in the description on how to generally uh, import sounds into an Unreal Engine 3 game uh, and you can place those down uh, just like you did before using the sound cues and so forth but uh, we'll just cover real quick today you'll see if you fly around any of the maps this is Anlao Valley we've got these like white and blue squares everywhere and these are what we call um, AK ambient sounds and as you can see they're set up here and in every one of them you'll notice this play event uh, this one you'll see is uh, Palm Tree City Russell, uh, where we're just pretty much listening to you know leaves blowing in the wind, uh, you know rubbing, rubbing leaves, rubbing branches, things like that. So this is really good to have if your map has a lot of uh, uh, trees. Maybe you're in the jungle or whatever. Most of these maps are. Uh, so what we can do to include this in our map, we can either copy this exact AK ambient sound right here. We can copy it. We can go to our map. We can paste it. Um, we can grab any of these. A lot of times you'll find maybe a, a, you know, a fire or a burning building or something like that. You want to grab the fire burning uh, sound from it, put it in your map. If we don't, uh, if you don't want to necessarily copy and paste, what you can do is just go to your map. And what I'm going to do now is I've got this, this copied to my clipboard. I'm going to jump to another map that I'm working on here. Okay, so now that I've loaded up my custom map, I can either, as I said, paste in the uh, the ambient sound that I had copied, and these are a little less customizable as they were uh, the old way. If you'll notice, I went to the uh, actual Palm Tree City Russell that we have right here. If I double click on this, you'll see right here, the distance you're going to hear this particular sound is set at 2000 UUs. So we can just put down more of them if we're worried about the sound not being loud enough. There are some other sounds on here that nearly cover the entire map. We've got a couple on here that are like bugs buzzing, things like that. So you can put one of these down on the map and it will cover probably nearly the entire map. Um, and you can check each one of them. All of them have, this one's 10,000. Uh, the multiple trees rustling loop, that'd be a good one to do. So you can put these down wherever you want. You can either copy and paste like I uh, suggested. You can reassign the event that goes into that sound property um, right here. We can change this to any of these we want. There's a package that contains quite a few of them. Uh, a lot of them are, you know, bugs, creatures, we've got some jungle birds, things like that. We can plug any of those into this this actual event here on the map. Um, if you want to add a blank event, uh, AK event, easiest way I found to do it, um, you can search through the actor ta classes tab in the content browser. 
although that's usually a pain. Um, if you just right click on the anywhere you want to add it, you go to add actor and then if you go to all templates, you'll see it right up here. Add AK ambient sound. We can drop that in and that's all this this thing is right here. Uh, and we can, it's, it'll be empty. You'll need to pl uh, plug in the event that you're gonna want here. The other thing to note when you're adding these types of sounds, they won't automatically kick on like they did in Red Orchestra 2. What you'll need to do, and this is very simple, somewhere in your Kismet, you simply need this setup right here. You need the level loaded and on the loaded invisible node right here, AK start ambient sound. So if we go down to our uh, new action, you come over here, you'll see AK audio, AK start ambient sound. We drag that right here. All you have to do then is plug that into start all. That will automatically kick off all the sounds. Um, some of the maps you'll notice have like a one or two second delay you can add there if you want to. Uh, because sometimes you load into the map and the sound blasts you as you're like in the spawn menu or the team uh, selection menu. So if you're noticing that happen, uh, all you really need to do here is, is add a, uh, a delay on this node here. So we can, you know, right click on it, set a delay, two seconds, I think some of the... Um, uh, vanilla maps use but that's all you need to do and then a lot of times what you can do is just kind of fly through the map walk through the map you know as you get further along and just see how the sounds play maybe you're you're encountering an area that's uh kind of empty of sound and it doesn't sound right but uh uh it works a little bit different than it, than it did in red orchestra 2 but that's essentially how you would set up the environmental sounds on your map Okay, the next thing I want to cover is the generic force field box, which you will find in uh, all the stock maps. I unfortunately learned about this a little too late, so the map I released a couple weeks ago didn't have one of these. And if you played it uh, or any of some of the other custom maps, you'll notice the smoke doesn't behave quite right from the smoke grenades. So a shout out to Psycho Pigeon. He filled me in on what uh, these exact, exactly do. But this blue box around Anlaun Valley right here, if I click on it, it's not a volume in itself like some of the other uh, boxes around here, but this one is actually called the generic force field box. You can find this in the actor classes under NX force field box. Uh, you can go down here. What I would suggest to avoid any headaches, just copy one from a vanilla map. And that's what I did on, on a new map I'm working on here. You copy that. If you need to resize it, you can use the scaling tool. You just kind of make need to make sure it encompasses the uh, area that players will be on the map. Obviously, you know, over off the side of the map, no one's throwing smoke, so we really don't care. Uh, but that's going to make sure that smoke behaves correctly, uh, yeah, appears to shift in the wind and things like that. So without this force field, box, you will notice some odd behavior from your smoke grenades. All right, next I want to talk about the RO character preview actor. Maybe you've seen uh, some of these weird mannequin looking things on some of the maps. Uh, they're they're uh, usually two. Uh, and what these do, and I was just informed about this as well, uh, something new to Rising Storm 2, when you first join into the match or at any time during the match, you click that character customization button. Uh, this is the scene that's going to show for the for the player when he's changing his uniform around. So, um, and a, a big shout out to Sergeant Joe and Beskar Mando on the modding for uh, Discord kind of educated me a little bit about this. I wasn't really clear on what this did. But uh, if you're not worried about where these appear on your map, you can omit these, and then the map will automatically randomly pick a spot. It won't necessarily be the most ideal place, but it won't break anything. So what you can do is place this one down. You can grab one of these. As always, copy. you can copy one off of another map. Or uh, you can grab it right here from the RO... Uh, character preview actor in the actor classes right click add it here now if you go to its settings there's really only one setting you really need to be worried about do you want this to be the north team or the south team's uh, actor or I guess both if you're not worried about it so most of the maps if not all of them have two one for each team so this is my north north team now you'll notice if I go to play from here and then if I pick the north uh, faction 
Uh, and then I click my character customization. I'm in the exact same scene that I am right here. So as you can see, I'm, it's the angles are maybe a little bit different. But this is where my guy is here in the background of the trees. And over here, you can't see too well, but there is a, a, a little bridge over there. So this is the scene that you want to, uh, to show when you're in this character customization menu if you're not worried about it you can omit that but it's a nice little uh customization you can place on your map to uh have players be able to get into this menu wherever you want them to okay real quick i've discussed this in another tutorial i know there's a few people new to the series new to map making here maybe even new new to unreal engine uh, but I want to briefly touch on probably the single most important thing you can do on your map to guarantee better performance, better optimization, and that is to make sure, uh, especially on the larger maps, we have a cull distance volume on every one of the maps. Um, you can wrap the entire level in the cull distance volume, as you can see I've done right here. Uh, and what you're going to do, and I'll put a link in the description of this video uh, that kind of gives a background on the Unreal Engine side of how these work. But uh, you can look at any of the vanilla maps. Vanilla maps, they all have these, and you can really uh, maybe mimic some of their settings. Uh, so some of the vanilla maps, in my opinion, are a little too aggressive on the culling. You're getting like disappearing objects at close range and things like that. But it's something you can play with to optimize your map. Uh, but essentially, what you're going to do is add in each. Uh, size of different objects on the map and here we have uh, looks like five settings and you can have as many or as few as you want but you're gonna choose at what distance those objects cull out or in other words disappear so uh, you know smaller objects can obviously cull at a clo closer distance to the player uh, with larger objects like this mountain or maybe some of these tree clusters, we don't necessarily want them disappearing uh, too close or it's going to be noticeable. And maybe you've seen that on some of the vanilla maps. Uh, but that's something to play with. Yeah, as always, always, always test your map in-game on your end before you push it out to the public and save yourself a lot of headaches and uh, a lot of complaints and criticism that you might maybe you could have avoided. But... Uh, as I said before, a cull distance volume is key to any uh, optimization on these maps and uh, probably the single biggest factor in keeping uh, good performance on your map. As many of you know, the uh, game does not officially support bots or AI or anything like that, uh, and I believe they are not even uh, available online. They can't even be set up for online servers. Uh, you can, however, play offline. This is often a good way to simply just kind of play through your map, maybe before you push it out to the public, see how it plays, see things you notice, things you don't. The bots don't work ideally, uh, not that they ever did, but they work much less efficiently in Red or or Rising Storm 2 than they did in Red Orchestra. If you do, however, want to set your custom map up for bots, uh, you're going to want to use these things called pylons, which are these P with these paths drawn on them or uh, whatever. You can find these, as always, in the actor classes. I think it's under navigation. I'll probably end up regretting this. No, there it is, pylon. You can add one of these down. Uh, if you get them too close, obviously you're going to have issues. Um, and you can see how I've added these in other in, in the other uh, tutorial series. But essentially, you want to put them down across the map. That's when you build paths. And if you tap the P key on your keyboard, you'll see anywhere that's green. Uh, these are areas that bots could potentially walk, run, go to. Um, and it kind of builds up the AI pathing. Uh, as you can see, this is compound and paths were added to this map. Uh, uh, but for whatever reason, in the end, they did, they opted not to include bots in the game. But you can play offline with bots. You can play offline, uh, you know, without bots too. But sometimes, like I said, it's not bad to run through your custom map offline on your end on uh, in-game. Uh, with bots just to kind of see how it plays out maybe give you a little bit of an idea of what will happen obviously once real players are on there things are going to be much different but if you do want to play offline with bots on your map you could add pylons this way uh, and just make sure you build paths uh, before you save it which is up here in the corner it takes maybe 
20, 30 seconds per pylon. So, uh, you know, allow a few minutes for paths to be built. Okay, guys, and the last thing I wanted to cover today, uh, the way Rising Storm 2 handles both the overhead map and uh, objective zone uh, capture areas, I guess, uh, textures, a uh, little bit different. Both the uh, overhead map and the objective zone capture areas, I've got one here on compound, are all uh, 2K textures for all the vanilla maps. So um, if you're going to include these textures in your custom map, I would suggest doing them at uh, 2048 by 2048. Uh, same with the overhead map here. Let me bring that up for compound. You are looking at uh, the same thing. This is also 2048 by 2048. Uh, I, believe in Red Orchestra 2 they were all 1024 but uh, this makes them a little bit sharper it makes them a little bit bigger too uh, and if you've watched the other tutorials remember the key when you're importing an overhead map or the uh, objective zone textures we've always got to be in the LOD group of texture group UI um, uh, so that needs to be 2048 another small uh, change to uh, the way textures for the objectives are done, um, they now have, uh, I guess, some sort of somewhat of a solid border with a little bit more opaque center. Um, and the uh, and I'll, I'm actually going to include. I'm going to upload this uh, exact uh, targa I've got here, and I'll put a link to it in the description so you can open this up in whatever photo editing software you use. But if you look, uh, we're in the uh, alpha channel here. If I just go to the base layer of the, um, whoops, if I just go to the base layer of this objective zone texture, it's pure white. So the only thing the objective zone textures in Rising Storm 2 use are the alpha maps. So when you import these, uh, this is from a custom map I made, uh, it, and if you open up any of the uh, vanilla ones, you'll, you'd see the same thing. The, the base layer like this is all white. It's always white. Don't make it black. It won't work. I tried. So this needs to be white. Uh, in your RGB channels, they are all white. They're blank. But in the alpha channel is where we're actually going to place the uh, the texture. So you would uh, use the same approach as the other tutorial I made about uh, making the objective zone textures in uh, Red Orchestra 2, except all the info goes into the alpha channel. So, uh, and I tried to kind of mimic the way they did it. I've got a solid white border that is 100% opacity. Uh, and then I've got the center, which is I think 62, 63, something like that, uh, which is kind of how the vanilla maps do it. This was kind of just eyeballing it. Um, everything else is the same when importing the textures, making sure the objective zone uh, pivot point is centered. That's all the same. If you have to adjust it, you you do that all the same way. But uh, the only difference is the way this opacity is handled uh, in the uh, in the map when you're capturing an objective. So I will upload this to uh, uh, my server. You can ex access this through the description. Um, and as always, if you have any questions, you have any uh, problems. Uh, you, none of this makes sense or something needs clarified, please comment below. I get the notifications quite often. If I'm available, I'll, I'll answer it as quick as possible. Um, you can also find us on the Rising Storm 2 modding Discord, which I'll include in the description, or on the forums for Tripwire, uh, where we've got our own modding section set up, open to anybody to come in and uh, read through or uh, you know, make a post, make a new thread or whatnot. But thank you for watching this uh, tips and trips video and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks.